Yo, welcome back to the TV show, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing this big behemoth of a novel, Under the Dome by Stephen King. I don't know if my, my plastic cover is making the glare on that something unbearable. But anyway, this massive tome... So massive that when they printed the paperback, they had to print two volumes of the paperback. Which, in my opinion, is nonsense. So let's get, before we get anywhere, let's just, let's just talk about the negative. Because I got a lot of positive about this book. The negative is, why would they take this book and break it into two volumes of the paperback. I mean, Under the Dome has less of a word count than It. It is actually a bigger book. Well, they published the entire It volume in one paperback. The Stand is a colossally larger novel than Under the Dome. They managed to fit all of that into one mass market paperback. But the dome, which has a significantly low number of words, or that's not even a sentence, has a less of a word count than the other two books I just showed you. For some reason, it needed two paperbacks. Oh, because the publisher makes, publishers make up decisions like this all the in time. It just bothers me. They could have just done one paperback instead of two. We know why they did two. It's all, you know, it's, it's money. It's money. Why, why print one book for the price of one book when you can print two books for the price of two books? I don't know if that even makes sense. You get what I'm saying, though. This is ridiculous. So, that being said, let's start the review. I've been reviewing every single Stephen King novel in order of publication. We are to Under the Dome, which means we are way far into the um, Stephen King collection. We got three quarters of the way, maybe more. Um, we always review the covers first because, you know, I like graphic design and cover art. Um, whereas this book here, I might have been holding it upside down the whole time. I apologize. Okay, this one, the glare from my plastic cover is kind of bad, but I do like this cover. I think it's pretty, like, minimalistic and elegant. It's just got the, uh, it's got the little town here, and you can tell there's a dome going up over it. It's got a wrap around. The dome goes over the other side, too. It's a good cover. Now, let's look at the paperbacks, because we've got two covers for the paperbacks. Um, and if we put them together... You can see that they make a dome. Got the scarecrow over here, which plays a big part in the story. Well, at least the earlier part of the story. You got the crows over here. Um, but, you know, th that's kind of cool how they how they matched, even though they uh, did two two books for the price of one. No, two. One book for the price of... This is what it is. This is how I'm going to say it. This is one book for the price of two. Sounds like a great deal but the covers are kind of cool how they match like that you can see how the dome comes together you see that how the dome it comes together like that those are good covers too i like them uh i think both covers are going to get a bit of a fail though just because stephen king's name is so small the title of the book is so small um same thing here just every, it's so small. I mean, you've got all this space. Just put Stephen King's name up there. Big and bold. Big and bold. Know what I'm saying? Anyway, that's my review of the covers. So let's talk about the book. Um, it's got a great map. Um, just aesthetically, we're, we're still talking about the aesthetics of the book, not the story. It's got a great map of the town of, um, God, what was the fucking town's name? Anyway, the mill or something like that. Uh, Chester's Mill. Jesus Christ. 
there's the town of Chester's Mill. So we're going to map of where everybody lives, everybody that's trapped in the dome, they, and, and a little map of the town. And then, even on top of that, we get a great character list, which is useful. Uh, so there's that. So A plus on those things. Now, um, I listened to the audible.com version of this as I read along. Uh, it took me about a... Normally, I read books real fast. This one, uh, I kind of sparsed out over a week or two of just listening. Um, the narrator was Raul Esparza, and he does a good job. So good job for the audible.com version. Now let's get to the book itself. This book has a classic Stephen King beginning. I mean, he thrusts you right into the action from the get-go. And you don't know, now if you... If you weren't, if you went into the book blind, like you didn't know that um, a dome had just come over the, because I mean, clearly under the dome gives away what, okay, it gives away what's happening. But if you didn't know what was happening, it would be very confusing because you're like, why is the, so the opening scene is a woodchuck just out there milling around in the forest. And then all of a sudden he's mysteriously cut in half by an invisible force. And then there's a lady out gardening, uh, Myria, Ma Myra, she's out gardening and she, she's just reaching across and suddenly her hand is severed by some invisible force. Um, there's a plane flying through the air and suddenly it crashes into an invisible wall up in the sky and, and just sort of rains parts down over the street. Um, if you didn't know that that the dome had just gone over there, you'd just be very confused and you'd be like, what is Stephen King writing about? This is intriguing. Since we know by the title that the town is under a dome, we obviously understand. And, and, the, and, the, and the graphics on the front give it away right now. We just know. That's okay, though, because it's just a cool opening. I just love the opening to this where cars are crashing into it because it's an invisible barrier. And every, every highway leading out of town, cars are just like, doo -doo 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 -doo, and boom, right into it. Or cars coming into town, boom, right into it. And then... Uh, Birds and stuff are flying into the dome, and everything is just happening, and chaos is raining. And then Barbary, Dale Barbara is sort of our main character. He's kind of like this guy who works in a diner, sort of like, um, and he just he's walking around, and he just he sees all this stuff happening, um, and he gets involved. He kind of becomes like the de facto sort of person that we see everything through. Most everything through. I mean, the story is told through a lot of different perspectives. We've got Barbary, Barbary, uh, Junior. One of the other early characters is Junior, who's just this psychopath who goes and beats up women, kills them. Um, he all, the, the, all these people kind of. There's the diner. There's the police force. There's the myriad of characters that Stephen King puts into small towns, and all of these people are trapped under the dome. Now, there's a lot of ref one of the things is that I liked about this is and I love this book. I'm going to I'm not just like I I love this. I'm going to gush a little bit about this book when a lot of people probably wouldn't. But I think it really harkens back to the classic Stephen King books that I showed before like it, not just because of its size, but it really harkens back to it and the stand in that we get just an enormous cast of characters that we just follow through this sort of small town lens. And really we don't even, like in The Stand, we branch out from the small town. Um, in Derry, we, in, in It, we sort of stick with Derry mostly. In The Stand, it's a lot of small town people branching out into the world at large. In The Dome, not only is it like Derry where they're stuck in the city, but they're really stuck in the town. They are, I mean, they ca literally cannot get out. Which causes a lot of the interplay between these small town characters. And we've got all of it. Stephen King, just a myriad of great Stephen King characters, from teenagers to crazy religious people to corrupt police to just good people like Barbary and then and, and the people that work with him in the diner and, and, and all of that stuff and how they all just sort of intermingle and don't get along, and it's just a quagmire of, you know, dysfunction in the end, which is which King does great with these small town stories. I mean, even Needful Things is kind of like this. Um, this book, 
talks about uh, kind of like, I, th I would say the themes of this book are, other than people are stuck under the dome, so that's the premise. The dome covers this town. People are stuck. They have to deal with it. People on the outside are trying to figure it out, like the President of the United States, the military. Everybody's trying to figure out why the dome has captured the city. Um, some of the presidential speeches, I would have liked to have had more of those, actually. Um, just kind of trying to discuss what how to how to what how to deal with this situation you know and then um but the themes are kind of like sodom once the dome is over the city and people are still in the city like having fireplace fires in their fireplaces or burning or driving around their cars or burning propane tanks to keep the diner going or whatever it is they're filling this dome with a bunch of toxic fumes. And so the dome starts to fill up with fumes. So there's a lot of themes about environmentalism here. There's also a lot of themes about power and how people deal with power because there's sort of um, this uh, power play between uh, Big Jim who uh, sort of gets this corrupt police department going and he, he kind of appoints his friend Randolph um, to be part of the police force and Randolph recruits like psychopaths like Junior who uh, to be the police force and and they kind of have to do battle against you know Barbary and his good and his good um Barbary I don't know why I call him Barbary Barbie and his in his good faction so we got the bad faction against the good we got the good and the evil fighting it out in this dome we got them both trying to figure out environmental issues um, all, all while trying to think of if, if this is supernatural. What, what, where's the dome from? Is it supernatural? Is it from outer space? They tend to think it might be an alien thing. I won't give away too many of the um, details on that because if you haven't read the book, I don't want to spoil anything for you. But one of the cool things is, is, is there's a lot of callbacks in this book to previous Stephen King works, like The Mist, other things. There's even callbacks to... Other writers like Jack Reach, like Lee Childs, Jack Reacher makes a cameo in this book, so it's just kind of cool. There's just a lot of little, like Stephen King does with all of his books. There's just a lot of little extra nuggets tossed in that just make it a delight to read. And I really, 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 really liked this book um, because it really, to me, harkened back to. Well, the books that I mentioned, The Stand and It, and not just because of this. Well, this is because of the size. It's because of the size, and and we're back in Stephen King territory of small town, a New England small town, and all the quirky characters that go with it, and how they interact with each other, and it's just an absolute delight. Absolute delight. Stephen King writes this stuff better than everybody on the planet combined if they tried. It doesn't make sense. Stephen King just writes this stuff better than any other writer. That's what I meant to say. I am going to give Under the Dome one of my, it's just one of my favorite Stephen Kings. I am going to give this another 10 out of 10. I just think it's one of the perfect, I don't even know if it's a horror novel, a supernatural thriller, small town literary treasure. Anyway, 10 out of 10 for Under the Dome, folks.